But Vinay Jaising is uh, with us. He's Managing Director, Portfolio Management Services at uh, JM Financial Services. Vinay, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much. Uh, just a quick word uh, to begin with on, uh, I mean, I'm looking at what you own and what you like, uh, right? I mean, across the board, Made, Make in India theme, IT services, FMCG. Uh, so in the Make in India theme, just your thoughts on uh, HAL, Hindustan Aeronautics, which I think you, you do own, you do like. Where are valuations at for uh, HAL, Vinay? And would you assign the same kind of valuations that capital goods companies get? Because if you look at capital goods valuation, they are far higher than defense uh, manufacturers, uh, especially the likes of ABB, Siemens, etc. Uh, because the industries are broadly overlapping, right? The same kind of industry structure. Go on. So thank you so much for this question. Uh, you know, when we looked at the defense sector first, uh, we thought it could be a secular growth part of our business. But that's when we realized that what the Indian government is trying to do, they try to make more and more of manufacturing come into the country, uh, replace them from what was being uh, coming in from the rest of the world into the country. So what that would do is, you know, that would reduce our import bill and the dependency on the country would increase. So our perspective, why do we like Hindustan uh, HAL? Uh, first reason, uh, good growth, uh, you know, of what they are doing in terms of uh, uh, the overall supply of uh, uh, planes. Second, uh, more importantly, Tejas is doing very, uh, very well. Third, India's uh, manufacturing, uh, the government's uh, mandate to manufacturing increase in the country would lead to a higher ownership for the Indian manufacturers up from 20-25% to 40-45%. So two trajectories, as the Indian pie of defense grows, uh, HAL grows. Second, as the India uh, manufacturing uh, space increases and as Indian planes are made more and more, HAL gains further. In terms of valuation, the stock is at one year forward uh, multiples of 2022. Uh, for me, it's not the growth of 23 or 24, which is tepid, but you know, as our analyst tells us, the 25, 26 growth would be even uh, much higher, 15 to 20%. So this leads it to be a core owning in our sector. Moving to your second question of capital goods, uh, I clearly believe uh, the valuation of this company can be a lot better. Uh, it could be sporadic because the government could give them orders every one to two years, but they have an order book for the next three years already filled. Uh, but when it comes, you know, people will keep on raising earnings estimates. And for me, it's a better way to play the industrial or the capital goods sector, uh, which is why we like Hindustan Aeronautics. Uh, then I afternoon, uh, Rima here. Just to get the big picture in, you know, it appears that the uncertainty related to China slowing down or the peak Fed hawkishness is largely in the price. We've been talking about it all over the world for the last so many months now. The earnings season is largely behind us. What are the triggers the market should be sensitive to from here on? So, so two things, you know, when we say uh, it's in the price, uh, you know, there's something which our macro analyst uh, showed us just yesterday. His point was, if you look at MSCI India in rupee and MSCI India in dollars, MSCI India in rupees is, is up a bit and MSCI India in dollars is down about 5 to 8 percent in the last year. So you've seen a 12, 13 percent plus uh, dollar uh, appreciation. The rupees moved from 70 and change to 82. So when we see even the index at 18,000 levels, if you knock it off for the foreign investor, you're probably at 16,500. So we largely agree with you that uh, you know the markets, uh, uh, not just world over, but India, though it's flat, uh, for a foreign investor, it's as good as being down 14, 15%. What to look out forward? Uh, again, you know, back to what US is doing. You know, and US is doing a three-point uh, strategy. First, it's hike rates at the fastest ever rate, uh, which we've seen in the last couple of decades. 400 basis point increase uh, in the interest rates. That's unprecedented. All of it, uh, you know, in a in a very short period of time. Now the question is, the next rate hikes could be slower, but there are rate hikes. If earlier analysts or economists felt that the number of interest rate could be you know, peaking at 5%, they could probably look at it peaking at 6%. That makes the US currency also uh, you know, a lot more attractive compared to the Indian currency. Uh, the second is, even when you reach that rate, how long will that interest rate remain at that level? And that's where you get pain or slowdown in US coming in. And the third trajectory really is, uh, you know, when does it correct? So you've got two trajectories left, uh, you know, for the market to see and test. And these days, you know, this will only be seen when you see earnings cut, both for the economy as well as of sectors. So 
you know, the world is undergoing six months to 12 months of pain because that's when this whole story would unfold. Hi, Vinay. Uh, you know, I want to ask you about the two big themes, you know, the pillars of the market, the IT space as well as the banking space. You know, you have been relatively cautious on the IT space. You have some exposure to Infosys, but I think the overall stance was you're cautious. So are you sticking with that? And also you have been buying private sector banks. But what about the PSUs? They are the ones that are really moving. Have you allocated any money to the PSU banking space that valuation buyers have some comfort? Sure. So let's look at all these uh, three questions, actually, not two, which you said. But first one, the IT space. Uh, uh, we are underweight the IT space because of the same comment I made earlier. Uh, the interest rates in US have moved up. The two-year chart today is at about 4.6% uh, for US as compared to the 10-year chart, which is at 4%. So there's a negative uh, uh, interest rate between the two-year and 10-year chart, which means there's a lot of pain in US in the short term. When this occurs, what we typically believe is in the next six to 12 months, you'll see a slowdown in the orders given by the global corporates to the IT companies, and you could start seeing earnings getting downgraded. So we're sticking to that stance of, of being 50% you know, underweight in the IT space. Uh, we like the dollar play, which is why the make in India becomes a lot more important. Uh, you know, wherever you have those companies where you're getting exposure to the dollar, but having raw material coming from the country. Our uh, second theme, you know, banks. Uh, if you look at the loan book growth of banks, every month it has been inching up. Today it's close to 18%, uh, similar to last month, 179 to be precise. Now that number is fantastic. Uh, if, if you compound it, you're saying in four years you're going to have the loan book growth doubled, right, from today's level. Having said that, the interest rates also for India are moving up, but not as fast as the rest of the world. The capital ADPC ratio for the big banks in India, the private banks are between 18 to 22, 23%, which means they are comfortable and they can capture growth, which is why we like the private banks. Having said that, uh, we also own uh, the biggest uh, PSU bank in our portfolio, uh, and we like it. The results were fantastic of SBI. Uh, but uh, incrementally, uh, uh, what we're seeing is in the private banks, we're seeing a, a comfort level and valuations in line with the uh, public sector banks, but more importantly, the capital DPC ratio is more, more comfortable, which means they can grow before they come to the market to tap for more equity. Uh, Vinay, at the outset, we must thank you for joining us in the day when uh, you know the match is going on. So thank you very much, you know, for uh, joining us uh, today on the uh, show. But you were talking about the banking space. <clears throat> Just turning your attention to the FMCG pack. In that, you picked Tata Consumer. Could you tell us why? Uh, lots of reasons, uh, apart from the fact that I like coffee. Uh, yeah. But you know, what's what's really important is if you look at the way Tata Consumer and the new CEO, who's not new anymore, they have been a year, a couple of years there. How he's made the food chain grow out there. You know, if you go to Amazon.in and just put Tata some on the number of products you'll get, which is really made FMCG. Uh, ready foods uh, is amazing. The way the margins in the salt business is growing uh, is great. Uh, the way uh, he, Starbucks is you know, going to get a lot more profitable in the times to come. Uh, the number of outlets of Starbucks are still a, a trifle of what they are in China, and that's increasing. So you've got too many triggers on uh, for Tata consumer, which is leading to their growth rate in earnings to being between 15 to 20, 25%, much higher than most of the other FMCG names, which is why we like Tata Consumer. Okay, uh, Tata Consumer. Bharti, uh, uh, Vinay, what's your, what's your view there? I mean, actually, it's one of the few businesses where we are actually seeing uh, earnings estimates moving higher. That's you know, right. One of the very few sectors, right? Otherwise, even for sectors like banking, earnings are holding. I mean, autos, earnings are holding. They're not rising expectations. But here, they are rising. Your thoughts? So, so I think perfect comment made by you, right? Our biggest concern for India are two. One was the currency, which I mentioned earlier. And second is the earnings trajectory. As inflation comes down, we'll start seeing earnings being cut by 4 to 5%. So, you know, we won't be surprised if uh, the Nifty EPS goes to even 810 levels one year forward. Having said that, as far as Bharti is concerned, Bharti has, a, you know, a three-pronged strategy. The first strategy is just... As you keep on digitizing, as you use more and more of the data play, uh, the traffic increases. So that's the first thing, make a consumer uh, use a lot more of gigabyte per day, per month. Second is uh, you start moving to hire ARPU customers. 
Uh, so the same person who is using lesser in terms of data being given unlimited at a point of time would get charged. So, you know, the ARPU, ARPU times, uh, uh, you know, the customer, you get the revenue pie increasing. And the third is increase the speed, you know, move from 2G to 4G. They have a lot of 2G customers and from 4G to 5G. So you give better speed, uh, uh, increase your uh, usage and charge a bit more. You know, the ingredients of all this is higher revenues. Incrementally, if you see the last couple of quarters, the incremental margin, which comes on incremental revenues for Bharti is way above their 40%. You know, it's closer to 60 to 70% because the variable costs, you know, are limited and fixed and fixed costs, you know, don't have more costs coming in uh, at, uh, incrementally, which means that, you know, their margins will improve. And that that's why as you have your EBITDA increasing, your bottom line increases a lot more further. So we are very positive, Bharti, as well. All right. Uh, very quickly, uh, Vinay, uh, you know, you have also highlighted that credit card spends are picking up, uh, uh, you know. Uh, a, a quick question is with regard to do you play this theme by the, by the only listed credit card company or by the banking space? You can do both. Uh, so, you know, you can play this game by the credit card company listed place as well as the banking space. Uh, lots of the private banks, uh, uh, Kotak in particular, you know, uh, have do not have their listing and they own 100% of it, uh, Ditto as well as ICHA. So technically you can play this uh, uh, we play this theme of credit cards by using the private banks, which we like. Uh, HDFC is is a leader in in its in the credit card space in India. Uh, it had some hiccups, but it's back, and we like that company as well. Avinay, uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. It's a pleasure as always, and uh, a great chat. Thank you very much. Appreciate uh, your time. Uh, well, that's uh, Vinay Jaising with his thoughts. The